Four spikes from London today, the BMW S1000XR. Over the last decade or so, BMW's moved on from being the producer of mild boxer twins to producing astonishing designs like the R9T and the Uber Tourer, the K1600 with the six-cylinder engine. Along the way, it's also produced the definitive sports bikes with the S1000 series of four-cylinder engines. And this new bike, the S1000XR, is the application of that engine to a whole new chassis and a whole new design. We wondered whether it was another landmark bike that would stand scrutiny from every angle. We wanted some expert witnesses to help us in our evaluation of this bike, and off we went to find them. So let's go find out and talk to a dealer. BMW dealerships are always a bit odd with their slew of cars surrounding you and blocking your way, but we know what we feel. Four legs bad, two legs good. Hello, I'm Harry. I work here in BMW Motor at Park Lane uh, for the past eight years. I'm business manager and selling motorbikes. Mm. How, how do you see the XR? What, what's the XR really about? I think the XR is sort of more the sportive version of the GS. So you have the riding position of the GS upright, relaxed, uh, comfortable, um, but more for people who always thought the GS is great for touring, but it just needs more power. So if you think about other brands, we're probably talking about the Multistrada from Ducati, as you, yeah. you mentioned, and the KTM Adventure. From what you said a minute ago, I think you're saying that the, the principal difference is the four-cylinder engine yeah. from the S1000R gives a different kind of power delivery from it's the twins different, yeah. of the Ducati and KTM. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about that. You know, uh, I mean, the twins, obviously, uh, in both the KTM and the Ducati, you have a V-twin uh, with a very specific characteristic, lots of torque in the bottom. And obviously, depending how they are being set up, um, you have a very um, brutal characteristic. <laughs> so Harry, you know, we can always get very technical discussing bikes and you know, yeah. it's, it's hard to avoid ending up talking about torque and horsepower and all that stuff. Let, let me try it a slightly different way with you. If I ask you to consider, you know, a, a few bikes, when I say the name of bike, can you, can you think of a dog? Okay. <laughs> so, um, right. and tell me which dog comes to mind. So if we're talking about the XR, what do you have in mind? Uh, I would have in my mind probably um, Rod Boiler, okay. I think so. And why is that? What, why is that an appropriate? Uh, it's a gentle dog who can be very strong. Uh, so I think that sort of associates for me personally probably the best genes of the XR. With Harry's expert thoughts racing through our mind, we thought we'd go for a walk with his Rottweiler. And, as it turned out, this is one exhilarating, swift, nimble beast. And we loved it. One of the things that I found going around town on it is that if you have to do quite a lot of stopping, which is what I'm doing now, at red lights, then the clutch, which apparently is not a hydraulic one, uh, is pretty heavy. You know, I mean, I'm not one for moaning much about how heavy clutches are, but you do notice this one kind of beginning to tire out your arm. I think that's compensated for by the fact that, at least on this specification, which is the SE Sport, you get quick shift and that means as you might be able to see you know you can change gears without any use of the clutch at all and that's up or down and it seems to be quite a clever <coughs> ECU maneuver where as you change gears so I'm going to change down now again no hands down through the gears um, the computer blips the throttle and so you don't get a, a shunt either. It's a really nice feature. We pretty quickly came to understand what Harry meant about the GS and needing more power. This has got that same upright commanding riding position, but it's in a lighter bike, a smaller bike, and one with about 30% more power. And it really shows.
Design and aesthetics are obviously a really subjective area, and without the panniers on the back, we're not so sure about the scaffolding. Others question the asymmetric, slightly cockeyed look of the S1000 that carries through to this model. But broadly speaking, this is a bike that people look at, and if you're lucky enough, you'll even catch the eye of the birds. Like 99% of its users, we made absolutely no attempt to go off-road on this bike other than riding on tarmac through a park, but we're happy to confirm that it's pretty comfortable to stand up on. We stumbled across a Union Jacked old-fashioned Mini. Strange to think how these two have become one. So I've been riding around on this XR for a few days and I'm beginning to be pretty clear about what I think of it. We've seen Harry at BMW Park Lane who told us it was a Rottweiler. Now we're going to see Dr. Lisa Das, our boss for the day, and what we really want to know is what kind of dog does she think her bike is? Let's go see. The work that you do, tell us a bit more about that. Give us a bit more detail of your consulting. What exactly do you get up to? Gastroenterology is a large field. We cover most of the organs, but most people associate us with bottom ends um, because we perform colonoscopy and we perform things like hemorrhoid banding. Would you be interested? Um, it depends how a ride goes, I suppose. <laughs> I might need these a little bit later on. <laughs> um, oh God, that was scary. <laughs> so to be fair to say that you're a person well acquainted with the inner workings of the human body. Definitely. It's pipe work and it's exhaust pipe in particular. All of it. <laughs> what do you get out of your bike that you're not getting out of your work, for example? I think the exhilaration, um, the adrenaline rush. Um, I, it does occur to me that you know, I don't think I'd want my consultant gastroenterologist to have a rush of adrenaline at the point At of your colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that's probably a good thing. What's this that you've got in front of us that I feel slightly threatened by? Well, I thought that uh, you've asked me some questions, so I was mm. just going to ask you whether you have any problems with your emissions. <laughs> These are um, particular stool forms. Perhaps you can tell me if you observe. Oh my Some God. people don't. Uh, I think, I, I'm going to say I'm a type four, if I may. Is that okay? It is fine. I think you don't need a consultation right now. Thank goodness. Should we go for a ride? I think so. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Putting all thought of Lisa's expertise with baffles and exhausts to one side, we headed off on a Typical ride for her across London. Nice looking bike, lady. <laughs> Why'd you go for white? I've always thought if I had a red vehicle, I would die. So I've never bought a red You're car kidding. or motorbike. It's lovely along here. It is. Your, your exhaust sounds great. They should sound the same. As a gastroenterologist said to his patient. <laughs> As you begin to live with the XR, you notice a couple of things. Some reviewers have talked about a lot of vibration around 5,000 revs. It's not something we really experienced, and if we did, we sort of put it down to the characterful and powerful nature of the bike, and it's not a complaint that we would have at all. What, what would you describe your riding style as? Cautiously aggressive. Where we did have an issue, all the same, was with heat. Lots and lots of heat. If you got stuck between two buses while you're filtering, pausing, you were quite likely to emerge several kilos lighter than you began. When you have the opportunity to kind of lay down the power, do you do that? Yeah, as you said, there's untapped energy in it, and that's the, that's the thrill of riding this bike. Yeah. For the record, it's worth saying that this bike's really well specced. It's got a little deflective windscreen that takes most of the airflow off you and makes it comfortable to ride mile after mile, slow and fast. Heated grips for the winter chills that come along. 
great suspension and um, as you might expect it's got a number of riding modes from rain to road to dynamic rain to insane as we sort of found because the xr when it's on dynamic mode and set to hard suspension is a complete flyer this is a very fast bike thank you lisa for that ride uh, it was great fun and that's your daily ride i think you know your your, com your commute the one that you get all that pleasure out of your xr on what was typical of that ride that you really enjoy every day? Well, I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, I think the favourite parts are Buckingham Palace, um, being able to just speed up through there, and then Blackheath. Um, it just allows you to use the bike to its maximum and cut through traffic and get somewhere quickly. There are just a couple of things I'd like to ask you to kind of finish up. One is perhaps slightly odd, but we were talking to the dealer, and we said to the dealer who sold you the bike, Harry, um, what, what sort of dog would an XR be? if it was a dog? I think if I was to name a dog, it would be a Greyhound. Right. Because I, I think the bike is very sleek um, and very powerful. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for much. introducing Real me. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Nice to meet Bye. you. <laughs>